Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the Herio Skirton Pro. I reviewed this grinder a while back when it came out. Actually, I think it was all the way back in 2017 or 18. Back then I was uh, quite positive about the Herio Skirton. Uh, so today I wanted to revisit the grinder and see if it's still worth getting. I have actually been using the grinder quite a lot in the last year, but probably not in the way you'd expect. So actually I've been using it as a pepper mill, which it's definitely overqualified for. But I also have to say that I have a bunch of great grinders at home and this is uh, the cheapest one. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that it's, you know, relegated to the rank of pepper mill. I think when you talk about grinders, it's important to keep some perspective. So obviously this is a lot cheaper than the premium manual grinders. I think at the moment it sits around 50 bucks or something like that. So we can't quite expect the same level as something more high end. But let's talk about it a bit more in depth, grind some beans and brew some coffee. When the Herio Skirton Pro came out, I actually saw it as a significant improvement over the original Skirton. Let's be frank, the original one wasn't that amazing. It was kind of wobbly with bad alignment and the adjustment mechanism was kind of annoying. It was here on the top of the grinder. So the Skirton Pro actually had a few pretty cool upgrades. It came with a different adjustment system, which was actually the same as the one found on the smaller Herio Slim grinder. So the adjustment is underneath the burrs here and then it has some clicks and you can move between the different settings and it's easier to find back to the old one. Then it also had this long metal handle here, which uh, was actually a lot nicer than the original one. So a long handle is always pretty nice to have because it will give you some additional leverage. This model also came with a different kind of lid. I remember I actually thought that was a pretty cool upgrade on the original one. You had this pretty annoying rubber cap that you had to massage in place. But this one is just has this beautiful concave shape. So it would just click in like this, like perfectly. Then moving down to the ground spin, we have this mason jar here, which is uh, pretty huge. I'm not sure who hand grinds that much coffee in one go. Probably you can have like three or four ounces here. The threading is standard mason jar size, so it's uh, quite easy to find a replacement if uh, you want something smaller. So if you have something like this lying around, you can just screw it on and now you have a compact travel grinder instead. The jar also comes with this uh, rubber cap here. I find that it tends to fall off a lot when you're grinding, but uh, the idea is pretty good. So I think some people actually place the grinder on the table like this and then they kind of like hold it down while they are turning the crank and I guess it makes sense for that kind of purpose. Personally I find it's really awkward to hold the grinder like this so I prefer just to hold it in the hand and then turn it around but it has a pretty wide circumference so you, uh, you need big hands to be able to hold it like this. Obviously the burrs are made of ceramic Back in the days, meaning just five years ago, that was actually quite normal for manual grinders, but most of the models we're talking about today have steel burrs instead. Steel is just way harder and sharper, so you don't have to use as much effort when you're turning the handle. Nowadays, most grinders will have bearings, and that combination of steel burrs and bearings make it so much easier to turn the handle around. So as you can see here, it's not really spinning that much at all. If you checked out my previous review of the Easy Presso JX, you can see that it will just basically continue spinning and that means that all the energy that you use go directly into the beans and that just makes it so much more easy to use in daily life. It can actually grind really fine. I remember I've been making espresso with it back in the days, but uh, it takes a really long time to grind but uh, the consistency is actually quite good when you get down into the final range here. Next up we have some medium ground coffee. I think this is around 16-17 clicks or something like that. 
The traction is a lot better at this setting here and it's not too difficult to grind. Of course there are some boulders here and there and, uh, and probably more fines than normally, but uh, overall it's, uh, it's acceptable. Actually this completely changed the grind profile. So now we have a lot of boulders, but it seems like we don't have that many finds. So this is probably what you would have to use for pour over or French press. I think if you go uh, much coarser than this, it will just be like too many boulders. So it does seem to have a pretty narrow range where you can find the setting for your intended uh, brewing method. Now let's try to brew some coffee and see how it tastes. First, I'll start out by timing how fast it is to grind 20 grams of coffee. Okay, and that's it. I stopped it here at 113, so it probably finished around 110. So you could say that is probably not that fast compared to most modern grinders. So I'm just going to brew a pretty standard 20 grams to 300 mils of uh, water. So the brew bed looks kind of muddy uh, and that's usually a sign that uh, there's a lot of fines in the grind. I didn't pour that aggressively so that there's so much silt on top now is not the best sign. The drawdown wasn't that bad. It was slower than it would be with a good grinder, but it wasn't impossible to brew. Okay, let's taste. Actually not that bad. It's, um, it's okay. But uh, you don't have quite have that sweetness and clarity that you get with a better grinder. At the end there's also like a pretty sharp uh, astringency which comes from uh, all the fines. I wonder if I can actually taste a little bit of pepper from uh, its previous job. It's actually quite interesting to review the Hario Skirton a second time. Back when it came out I thought it was a pretty good grinder, especially for the money. But today it's just a lot harder to recommend it. Especially now that we see some really affordable grinders with bearings and steel burrs like the Time More C2, which is just in a different league if you ask me. So I think if you were interested in the Hario Skirton Pro, then maybe consider add just a bit more to the budget and then go for something like the Time More instead. Let's say that in the end you have to spend one and a half minute every time you want a cup of coffee instead of just 30 seconds in a year, that's a lot of time wasted when you could just pay a little bit more and get that huge upgrade for your morning coffee. I'm not sure if there are any like really good arguments for the Skirton Pro. It looks really cute with that kind of round design and the volume is huge. If maybe that's something you care about. But now it's uh, 2020, almost 21, and I think there are just so many better options that are not that much more expensive. If you have a Hario Skirton Pro, I don't think there's any reason to be sad. It's the same thing if uh, you compare an iPhone 6 to the newest generation. Of course, it's going to feel kind of uh, old and dated. The coffee industry has just been kind of slow to innovate for many years, but now we're finally seeing stuff to move a lot faster. What do you think about the Skirton? Do you have one? Do you still like it or you think it's about time to update? Uh, what are some other budget options that people should consider? Let me know down in the comment section below. By the way, the next grinder I'll review will be in a completely different league, so make sure to hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on that review. That's it for today, I'll see you in another coffee video very soon.